Hey YouTube, this is my list of the 12 best lines from presidential debates, shown in chronological order from 1980 to mid-2016. Included are some of the most memorable moments from each election cycle. A few of these lines actually swayed public opinion in favor of one of the candidates, although that's becoming less common these days, as Americans are more firmly divided among party lines. If you want to see highlights from the 2016 debates, check out my other video. I'll leave a link in the description and at the end of this clip. And if you're a Trump fan and you're wondering where that line is, you know the one I'm talking about, the one you're always asking about in the comments. Rest assured, it's in the other video. I should also note that this is a re-upload. I had to upload the video again due to a change in YouTube's policy. The old version of the video was pretty well received, with over 1.7 million views and a whole lot of likes, so I appreciate the support. Before we get started, please subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to show YouTube that there's an audience out there for videos about political history. The more subscribers I have, the less likely it is that I'll be forced to take down my videos in the future. In an effort to be as unbiased as possible, when it came to choosing these lines, I tended to favor the winner of the election. I also tried to have approximately the same number of highlights from each party. So, just trying to be fair here. Our first line comes from Ronald Reagan. You'll probably be surprised to learn that Reagan only debated incumbent President Jimmy Carter once in 1980. But one debate was enough time for Reagan to hit Carter with not one but two moments that came to define the campaign and ultimately win him the election. Watch how well Reagan was able to communicate through the TV to everybody watching at home. Are you better off than you were four years ago? Is it easier for you to go and buy things in the stores than it was four years ago? Is there more or less unemployment in the country than there was four years ago? Is America as respected throughout the world as it was? And if you answer all of those questions, yes, why then I think your choice is very obvious as to who you'll vote for. If you don't agree, I could suggest another choice that you have. Well, this next line might not seem like much. As per Wikipedia, it emerged as the defining phrase of the 1980 election and it quickly implied that an opponent was engaged in hyperbole or even hysterical comments. It turned out to be so popular that Reagan would often evoke it in later speeches and press conferences. Now we have an opportunity to move toward national health insurance with an emphasis on the prevention of disease. Governor Reagan again typically is against such a proposal. Governor, <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> when I opposed Medicare, there was another piece of legislation meeting the same problem before the Congress. I happen to favor the other piece of legislation. For number three, here's a Democrat versus Democrat moment. During the primaries of 1984, Walter Mondale used a topical line from a TV commercial to make fun of Gary Hart's policies. This moment was significant because Hart actually had a slight lead at the time, but Mondale went on to win the nomination. I think the, the dedication of the Democratic Party to minority people in the South and elsewhere shouldn't just be jobs, it should be the opportunity to own and operate businesses that create jobs. Mr. Glenn. Can I respond yeah. to that? Well, we'll, get, we'll come back new, to you. Let some new, of the others What's new have. about coming out from <clears throat> entrepreneurs? You know, when well, I, when I some, hear, when I hear, what, when I hear, to do that, when I right. hear your new ideas, I'm reminded of that ad, where's the beef? Yeah. <laughs> Um, if, if you'd... Let's keep going to no. <laughs> For a bit more context, especially for those of you who weren't around in the 1980s, here was that ad from Wendy's. It's a very big fluffy bun. Where's the beef? Some hamburger places give you a lot less beef on a lot of bun. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, we serve a hamburger we modestly call a single. This is another great line from Reagan to Mondale in 1984. I won't spoil anything. I'll just let it speak for itself. I recall yet that President Kennedy had to go for days on end with very little sleep during the Cuba Missile Crisis. Is there any doubt in your mind that you would be able to function in such circumstances? Not at all, Mr. Truett, and I, and I want you to know that also I will not make age an issue of this campaign. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> All you need to know for this one is that Lloyd Benson and Dan Quayle are in a vice presidential debate, and they're talking about John F. Kennedy. This is a pretty nasty burn. 
I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. That was really uncalled for, Senator. <laughs> You're the one that was making the comparison, Senator. If you've seen my other video, The 15 Worst Fails, then you'll know that right before this line, George H.W. Bush took a question from an audience member, and he didn't answer it particularly well. Then Bill Clinton got a chance to address that same voter, and he knocked it out of the park. In a tight three-person race, this moment made a big difference for Clinton, as he appeared more empathetic and understanding than Bush and Ross Perot. Tell me how it's affected you again. Um, you know people who've lost their well, jobs, yeah. lost their homes? Uh -huh. Well, I've been governor of a small state for 12 years. I'll tell you how it's affected me. Every year, Congress and the President sign laws that makes us, make us do more things, it gives us less money to do it with. I see people in my state, middle class people, their taxes have gone up in Washington and their services have gone down while the wealthy have gotten tax cuts. I, I have seen what's happened in this last four years when, in my state, when people lose their jobs, there's a good chance I'll know them by their names. When a factory closes, I know the people who ran it. When the businesses go bankrupt, I know them. And I've been out here for 13 months, meeting in meetings just like this, ever since October, with people like you all over America. People that have lost their jobs, lost their livelihood, lost their health insurance. Mm -hmm. What I want you to understand is, the national debt is not the only cause of that. It is because America has not invested in its people. It is because we have not grown. It is because we've had 12 years of trickle-down economics. We've gone from first to 12th in the world in wages. We've had four years where we've produced no private sector jobs. Most people are working harder for less money than they were making 10 years ago. It is because we are in the grip of a failed economic theory. And this decision you're about to make better be about what kind of economic theory you want. Not just people saying, I'm going to go fix it, but what are we going to do? What I think we have to do is invest in American jobs, American education, control American health care costs, and bring the American people together again. Now, this one is just for fun. George W. Bush didn't really have any knockout lines during his debates with Al Gore, but there was this one strange moment that always made me laugh. Gore, for some reason, walks too close to Bush, and watch how he handles it. That's what the question in this campaign is about. It's not only what's your philosophy and what's your position on issues, but can you get things done? And I believe I can. All right. Some of the more cynical folks out there may think that Joe Biden was simply putting on a performance here, but I think he was actually being genuine. If not, give him the Oscar. But if you know anything about Biden's biography, then you know he's had to deal with a lot of tragedy. And I think that came through really well in this answer. Look, I understand what it's like to be a single parent. When my wife and daughter died and my two sons were gravely injured, I understand what it's like as a parent to wonder what it's like if your kid's going to make it. I understand what it's like to sit around the kitchen table with a father who says, I got to leave, champ, because there's no jobs here. I got to head down to Wilmington, and when we get enough money, honey, we'll bring you down. The notion that somehow, because I'm a man, I don't know what it's like to raise two kids alone. I don't know what it's like to have a child you're not sure is going is to make it. I understand, I understand, as well as with all due respect the governor or anybody else, what it's like for those people sitting around that kitchen table. And guess what? They're looking for help. They're looking for help. They're not looking for more of the same. Most people believe that Barack Obama lost the first debate to Mitt Romney. TV pundits criticized Obama for being too passive, too apathetic, too laid back, etc. Whereas Romney was on point in attacking from the get-go. Almost the entire political chattering classes agree that President Obama lost the first presidential debate. Many say Mitt Romney wins in more ways than one. Going into the debate, President Obama was way ahead of Romney in the likability polls. But last night, Romney won up the president. So there was a lot of pressure on Obama to come out swinging in the second and third debates. I'll let you decide whether or not he was successful. But here's some of the more memorable moments from when he went after Romney. I think Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. 
Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. And here's another funny quip from their second debate. Have you looked at your pension? I've got to say. Uh, Mr. Pen yeah. President, have you looked at your pension? You know, I, I don't look at my pension. It's not as big as yours, so it doesn't well, take let as let long. Me, let me give you some... The, let me uh, give for some context here, you have to know that Mitt Romney was caught on a hidden tape at a private fundraiser saying that 47% of Americans would support Obama no matter what, because they considered themselves victims who needed the government to take care of them. And, uh, and so my job is not to worry about those people. I'll never convince them that they should take personal responsibility and care for their lives. What I have to do is convince the 5 to 10% in the center. Obama waited until his closing statement at the very end of the debate to challenge Romney on what he said. I believe Governor Romney is a good man, loves his family, cares about his faith. But I also believe that when he said behind closed doors that 47% of the country considered themselves victims who refused personal responsibility, think about who he was talking about. Folks on Social Security who've worked all their lives, veterans who sacrificed for this country, students who are out there trying to hopefully advance their own dreams, but also this country's dreams. Soldiers who are overseas fighting for us right now. And when my grandfather fought in World War II and he came back and he got a GI Bill and that allowed him to go to college, that wasn't a handout. That was something that advanced the entire country. And I want to make sure that the next generation has those same opportunities. That's why I'm asking for your vote and that's why I'm asking for another four years. <laughs> this last one is a doozy. During the Republican primaries, Ted Cruz tried to go after Donald Trump for being from New York, which is typically a liberal state. In other words, he was accusing Trump of not being a true conservative. But Trump absolutely turned the tables on him in a way that Cruz probably didn't expect. Watch his face melt here after Trump hits him. Senator Cruz, you suggested Mr. Trump, quote, embodies New York values. Could you explain what you mean by that? You know, I think most people know exactly what New York values are. I am from New York. I well, 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 you're from New York, so yeah. you might not. But I promise you, in the state of South Carolina, they do. Uh, New York is a great place. It's got great people. It's got loving people, wonderful people. When the World Trade Center came down, I saw something that no place on Earth could have handled more beautifully, more humanely than New York. You had two 100... <laughs> you had two 110-story buildings come crashing down. I saw them come down. Thousands of people killed. And the cleanup started the next day, and it was the most horrific cleanup probably in the history of doing this and in construction. I was down there, and I'd never seen anything like it. And the people in New York fought and fought and fought, and we saw more death and even the smell of death. Nobody understood it, and it was with us for months, the smell, the air. And we rebuilt downtown Manhattan, and everybody in the world watched, and everybody in the world loved New York and loved New Yorkers. And I have to tell you, that was a very insulting statement that Ted made. 